don't this time. Come off it. That's all you got to say, you better off. What the hell is the idea of that? What? The phone. I've just been round to Sedgwick's cafe. He's doing his nut. Oh, let him, let him. Elsie, have you seen yourself? Have you seen what you look like? I didn't have to come round here. It's no merry-go-round for oh, me, you know. give over, will you? I heard you say all this last night. I'll do you a lot of good, won't it? Oh, well, see, love. Snap out of it. One bloke. He's not all that important, you know. I know what it's doing to you. And he's not worth it. No way. I'll be all right. You usually bounce back quicker than this. Oh, Len, will you give over? I know what people are saying out there. Elsie Tanner shot a boat. Yeah, well, one or two of them, are. Huh? One or two, maybe. And is that what's upsetting you, what people are saying? Do me a favour, Len. You know me a lot better than that. Then what is getting at you, then? It's... It's not what people are saying. They've said it all before a hundred times. It's just that this time they... they might be right. I told you what I thought last night. It's very hard to accept, Len. Especially when you're on your own. You've got to accept it, though, haven't you? It's the best bit of advice I can give you. Yeah, well... Well, I'm not even feeling so well, Mr. Sedgwick. Well, I think it's flu or something like that. Yeah, well, I've had the phone off because I didn't want to be disturbed. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be in tomorrow if I feel any better. Mm. Yeah, well, I'll ring you first thing if I'm not right. OK, yeah. Catalogue you've come for. Yeah, Rita wants it. Yeah, it's a mess, isn't it? Still, if you've not been feeling well, I know what a clutter my place gets in if I'm off colour. Are you not well, Elsie? Oh, come off it, bet. You what? All right, then. What's the flaming game? Game. You, shutting yourself up here like a nun or something. I'm just not allowed any privacy at all. No, you're not, love, no more than I am. Because your life's been conducted out there, in public. Putting on the show, putting on the style, and enjoying every minute of it. But the minute you run for cover, they've got you down for dead, and that's something they've been looking forward to. So tell me something new. Dan Johnson all over again, were it? Oh, Bert, come on, do me a favour, will you? Sorry. You were flying your kite a bit high, though, though, weren't you? I think so, do you? Yeah, I did. You're dead right. So now you feel all humiliated. Well, it's happened to all of us, kid. That's not what I'm striking about, that. What, then? I... I feel as if I... I don't want to try for anything ever again. I feel... One more experience just like that, Mum. Oh, it's frightening. I know exactly what you mean. Do you? <laughs> yeah. How often can you get socked in the teeth before folks start calling you gummy? Yeah. I've uh, not entirely given up the ghost, though. Not quite. Good. Eh? Because the first thing we've got to do is get you back in the land of the living. All it'll take is one appearance in the rovers in your war paint. Be like now it's happened. Is that all it takes? Absolutely. You see, love, folk don't feel sorry for you. They envy you. Because their own lives are so bloody boring. You think so? 
I know. So, I want to see you in the Rovers tonight, looking like a set of fairy lights. As it happens, it's my night off. We're going to have a couple in there and then swan round town for a couple of hours. You never know, Elsie. We could just go on forever. You and me. I'll see. You'll be there. See you. Hey, you forgot your catalogue. Oh, yeah. That's where I came for. Oh, hey, you're all dolled up, aren't you? Fancy dress, is it? Yeah, <laughs> guess who I'm going out. Two more light tails to take out. Okay, Miss Fancy. Having a night on the tiles, are you? Why, do you fancy coming? Uh, no, thanks all the same. Me and Sam's having a quiet night in. They got that 65 fee with these. Ooh, why, yeah. You'd think it'd be cheaper supping in your own home, wouldn't you? <laughs> Oh, well, enjoy yourself. Yes. Well, look who it is. Hello, stranger. Hilda. Thought you'd hibernated us summer. We've all been very worried not seeing you about. Yeah, well, I've not been feeling too well. I called round myself this afternoon, you know. Yes, well, I was probably asleep in bed. Oh, looks as if you should still be there. You don't look at all well. She does wonders for your confidence, doesn't she? She's a little marvel, isn't she? Gin and tonic, please. Right. Betty, will you put another gin and tonic on that order, please? Okay. Thanks very much. You're very well. Was it something I said? Leonard doesn't approve of you and me going out together on the razzle. So, then, is he going straight laced in his old age or something? Well, I think he's got your interest at heart, Elsie. Chop, chop with that gin and tonic, please, Betty. It's a long time since I've been in here, and it hasn't improved. Well, I had my first ever drink in here. We used to nip in from Liberal Club round corner. I'll not tell you how old we were. Two G&Ts, love. Right, love. You know, it's all coming back to me. Yank used to bring in here, an Air Force captain. He thought we'd seen a bit of real old England. Locals used to sup off him all night. Still, it was a fair swap, I reckon. So what happened to him? Raid over Germany. Werner, his name was. He was forever picking me up and swinging me round. There you are, ladies. Thanks, love. One for yourself. Tom. Don't I know you? Do you know, I was just thinking I knew you. Shirley Bennett. Shirley Captain that was. Oh, of course. Bet Lynch that was and still is. We went to school together, me and this one. Has she? Do you know I haven't seen you for donkey's years? Well, I've only just come back up north. Well, last year. I lived in Portsmouth till we broke up, you know. It was in the Navy. Well, we were all right till we finished. Retired. <laughs> and I found I couldn't stand him. <laughs> she's a right one, that. What's even me and Cher? You know what she used to do? She used to let the bloke that she were going out with bring her home. Then she'd nip straight out through the back door and meet another one that had been given her the eye to dance all her in a pub. Well, didn't everybody do that? That's more like it. Cheers, got you. Give us a pie, Joe. Hang on, I'm having trouble with this till. You'll be having trouble with me in a minute, darling, if you don't get a pint to me hand quick. Good. I think I've clicked. You've only got one head and all. Can't be bad. Come on, Shirley, my throat thinks I'm living in a desert. Change your mind then, love? No. I couldn't sit and watch somebody else drinking, could you, Elsie? Like torturing yourself, that is. Worse than looking at stiffs. Cheers, love. Yeah. See, see One on her own, is she your mate? Independent type. Look, will you stop talking about me as if I'm dumb or something? It annoys me. Oh, sorry, I'm sure. I've had enough to drink. Oh, come on, Bet. What have we had? Enough. Oh, don't be a wet blanket. What's up with you? Yeah, come on, enjoy yourself, darling, like Elsie is. Is that what you call it? Excuse me. Excuse me. Certainly, your ladyship. Leave her mint coat on the bus, did she? Oh, she's all right. You could have fooled me. Mind you, who's bothered? I'm not. I got the good-looking one. You know, you were front of the queue when they were dishing out cheek, you were. Where have you been all my life? Oh, Paris, Hollywood, Mustique, the cop, places like that, you know. 
had you down for a film star as soon as I walked in. Oh, you give On my mother's grave. Right. Married, are you? No. Live on your own? Yeah. Locally? Oh, no, not far away. Ten out of ten. Huh? You cheeky. Don't bite it, darling. It can bring you out in spot you. <laughs> Have you a minute? Yes, love. That bloke you seem to have taken a shine to. Not me, love. He's a right weasel. Thinks women are fag cards. Don't worry, love. I had his number first time he opened his gob. Is your mate deaf, then? Oh, no. no. <laughs> right, Elsie, I'm off. Eh? I said I'm going, eh? Coming. What are you on about? You've only just got here. I'm not talking to you. Elsie? What for? It's not late. And I'm enjoying myself. Isn't that the point? I just want to go. I don't. Well, then I think you're a mug. See you, kids. See you, Beth. Funny woman. You made the correct decision there, darling. No danger. Yeah. There's only enough for one. <laughs> You have it then. Oh, I couldn't. Then you have it. Oh. It's time you were getting off home, you know. Yeah. Well, it would be if I hadn't got settled in here. Yeah, well, you're not stopping. Oh, you're not turning me out this time of night, Elsie. Tell I'm me. afraid of the dark, you know. I've told you, you're not stopping here. Yeah, just like you told me I couldn't see you home and I couldn't come in. Yeah, well. You know what they say, Elsie? Oh. Never spoil the ship for a bit the time. No, you're a cheeky devil. You get her off. No, get her off. I mean, you know me. I'd wriggle me hips at a yard brush if it were wearing pants. For even I drew the line at this blow. Not our Elsie, though. Then he must have been rough. Thank you, Rita. You're welcome, Bert. Well, what was wrong with him? Here. I thought I'd told you, Riley, about interrupting in these grown-up conversations. Oh, take no notice. Go on. Well, he didn't look all that rough. I mean, he got a suit on and a collar and a tie. But even if this mate of mine behind the bar had to warn me, I could smell he put women about on a par with egg and chips. He'd have been shouting, get up them stairs in a bungalow. Oh, and Elsie really fell for him, did she? See that? Now, the palms of her hands will be sweating, and her little piggy eyes will be getting more bloodshot by the second. She gets like that if she has to handle it in a pipe tobacco. Did she, Ben? Well, she were letting him rub holes in her stockings with his bony little knees under the table when I left. Is that a fact? Oh. No, who's getting hot under the collar? I'm merely taking a polite interest in the life and times of a friend, that's all. <laughs> What's your story? Hey, isn't she getting uh, cocky? Watch it, you. So, you reckon Elsie might have thrown caution to the wind and ended up singing for a supper? I've no idea, cop. All I know is, I had my supper on my own. Again. 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 See you. Carlo. The rough and ready type of man, Rita. It'd be bad luck if I didn't. Why? I went to one. <laughs> Lucky you. Well, I think she's gone crackers as she's in her second childhood. That's what I think. Do you? I mean to say, a woman at her time of life, collecting fellas like there was co op stamps. <laughs> Talk about playing new tunes on an old fiddle. She's giving a flipping concert. <laughs> Hilda? Yeah. Did you actually see a chap in Elsie's last night? Well, no, I never actually saw him. But it wouldn't have been her clumping up and down the stairs in size 12 boots till 2 o'clock in the morning, would it? I still say you've got a very vivid imagination, lovey. Ooh. No one near vivid enough to imagine what was going on in that house last night, I'll tell oh. you. Come on, it's 10 o'clock, I've got work to go to. Come on, it's time you were up and out. What's all the push about, love? I told you. I've got work to go to. I've been off all week. If I don't go in this morning, I stand a chance of losing my job. Never spoil a good night out by rushing off to work next morning, love. I never do. Oh, you do work, do you? Well, I've nothing better on. Oh, you're dead lucky, you are. No, just good at what I do. 
Stick a shovel in me hand and I'll dig through solid rock for you. There aren't many of us about since muscle were mechanised. Oh, fancy that. Well, I'm... I'm going now. Well, off you toddle then if it's going to make you feel any better. Myself, I feel a bit lucky today, like I could win a few quid. Well, I want you out of here as well. Hmm? I want you out of here now. Oh, come on, Elsie. Love, have a heart. I haven't had my breakfast yet. I could eat a dead donkey. You surely don't expect me to start well, buying Well, yes, I, I was expecting, like, a, a little reward. But I can do it myself, don't fret. Have you got any bacon in? My God, you weren't behind the door when they were dishing out cheap, were you? Well, you should know, love, if anybody does. I prefer you out of here. And I'd prefer it if I had some breakfast, love. I'm a growing lad. There's some bacon in the fridge in there. Thanks. I'll only have a couple of rashers. I'm not greedy. Well, give us a kiss to Arlen. When are we going to have another night out? We're not. Oh. Didn't you enjoy yourself or something? You give every impression that you did. You've changed your tune, haven't you, love? Forgotten last night, have you? You've got a very poor memory. I was drunk last night. Yeah, I think I must have been as well, seeing you in broad daylight. You pig. Oh, stop giving me all these compliments, love. Hey, I forgot to ask, have you got any eggs? Oh, hello, cock. Wonder where I got you, did you? I was just this minute coming home. Come on, where is she? What are you doing? Left her in bed, have you? Who, who are you going on about? Mrs. Tanner, Elsie Tanner. Have you gone potty or something? This is a mate's house. We had a skinful last night. He let me sleep on his sofa. Now he's gone to work. There's no one here. You're a liar. Muriel! Come on, cock. Let's be getting home. Oh, your friend wears court shoes, does he? And a bright green head scarf. They must be his wife. I've not seen her. There's only one woman who lives here, and that's Elsie Tanner, and she's not wed. And not now, and but she has been before. Yeah, well, now she's living with a bloke, my mate. Oh, come off it, Bill. Do you know where I just come from? Lord Nelson, your second home. Oh, yeah, old big god behind the bar. Well, I'll tell you something, love. Don't pay any account to out she says. She's a right witch, and she's got it in for me. Oh. Ever since one night when I give her the brush off after she wouldn't let me buy me own ale. Oh, my. And talking of pain, you paid for that bottle of gin, did you? Oh, no, not me. I didn't. Oh, didn't you? Didn't you really, Bill? Not out of that five you took out of my purse before you went out last night. What five? You have gone oh. potty. You steal me money, you spend it on booze and a common tart, and you stop with her all night. Well, I'll tell you something. I've had it. I've had it right up to here, mate. You're not a fella, you're an animal. Do you hear me? You're a blooming animal! Oh, get stuffed, you dried up old bitch. Oh. You could be an A, pal. No! Oh. Well, you got to hand it to her, haven't you? Through. I'll sit on her, who else? She has a fella stopping the night, and it's still going on. Where is? Well, the orgy, of course. Oh, you want to hear the racket coming from in there? I don't know where she gets her energy from. I feel tired after a dirty laugh these days. <laughs> there you are. You're obviously concentrating on the wrong case, Alfred. You get a lot more mileage out of Elsie Tanner. So what else is new? <laughs> there you are. Is your headache really bad? Oh, I feel as if there's a little man inside it banging on a tin drum. Why don't you go home? I can't. Sanders cleared off. Worn out, she said, with me being off the rest of the week. Well, if you will go out on the razzle, there's always a price to pay. Oh, Bet been in, has she? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this has Bet been in. Well, you know very well she has. Oh, why? She was in this morning, and she did mention that she went out with you last night, but uh, she never complained of headache, did you, Mavis? Still. Still what? She didn't end up with a fella. Hmm. I can imagine what Bet told you, and with relish. But I tell you, Summit, whatever she told you couldn't have been half as spicy as the truth. Not one half. As a matter of fact, she did say it was hardly Mr. Super Smooth. What was the word? Earthy. Reed, how could you? Yeah, was a bit near the bone oh, there. It went right to the heart, you could see. You turn into the demon drink early tonight, aren't you, Hilda? Ah, oh, well, it's like this, you see. Stan hasn't come home for his tea yet, so I thought to myself, right, sunshine, two can play at that game. So I went through his best jacket and I found a quid he didn't know he had, and here I am. Good thinking. <laughs> I am. 
Oh, here's another one, yeah. Elsie. Oh, okay. What are you having? Hilda's coming to money. Oh, hey, it won't run to her sort of drinks. Uh, gin and tonic, please. Though. Right. You uh, not working again today, then? Yes, as a matter of fact, Hilda, I've just finished. Oh, that's funny. I could have sworn I heard somebody moving about in your house dinner time. Well, Hilda, last week you heard somebody moving about in my house. And we all know what a load of cods all up that was. No, I could have sworn. There you go. Thank you. Love. There was other noises as well, like uh, like somebody breaking glass. You don't mind me saying so, Elder. You hear noises because you listen. Why don't you give your luggles holiday for a change? You can't fool me, Elsie Tanner. I know what's been going on in that house today and last night, and I think it's a disgrace in a respectable street. I'm going to ask to have my rates reduced with you turning it into a fairground. I thought you was past all that long since. <coughs> So you did click last night. You should know you've been broadcasting it around enough. Touché, as Mrs. Walker would say. Although I'm damned if I know what that means. How did it go? Let's say I got what I asked for. Well, you were warned. Yes, I was warned. He lived up to his repulsiveness, did he? Oh, much more. But have you learned your lesson? Shall we say I've given myself a good talking to? Well, that's some. Yeah, I think so, anyway. You know what makes it more difficult for us? If there wasn't just the odd good un, the odd nice fella. I mean, if they were all like him last night, well, it'd be a case of Sam Ferry Anna and we could settle down to a good game of Newmarket and to hell with fellas. Right. How do you do? Evening. Hello, Hello Elsie. Are you feeling better? Yeah, much thanks. Nice. Well, that's Who's going to have a drink on me? A fella paid a bill today that I thought had left the country. Now he tells me when he's got me in here instead at Midland. Elsie. No, thanks. One's enough for me tonight. I had more than enough for myself last night. See ya. Trakok, I'll uh, join the Mother's Union with you, if you like. You're on. Oh, she's booked up, aren't she? Mm. She's a realist, Elsie. Aren't we all? You what? Never said a word. I'll have a large vodka and tonic. And I'll have a very, very large gin, if I'm included in the celebrations, right? I'll tell you what it's like. You can have a single now and another one later, or a double now and go straight home. He's a wizard with figures, you know. As well as being humorous and handsome and cuddly. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Come in. Why not? I just bumped into Sedgwick. He's doing his nut. You not turning in again. Good God. Oh, it's nothing to what it was. Who the hell's done this look? Burglars? No, nothing was taken. What, vandals? Bloody kids? No, it was Smashing things up it for the sake of it. wasn't kids, Len. I'll, I'll get you a cup of tea. No, no, don't. No, no, I'll do that. You sit down. You look as if you haven't slept all night. I haven't. I just sat here all night looking at it. All night? Where, where, when was all this done? Found it when I came home. Good God. What did the police say? Oh, I haven't sent for them. Well, you should in August. No, Len, don't. I don't want them fetching. You've got to. You can't let whoever did this get away with it. Is there any more? Yeah, upstairs. All my clothes, suits, coats, undies. If you know any old ladies that like stuffing cushions, you better tell them to come and help themselves. Hey, listen. I want the truth. None of your jokes. I'm not much in the mood for jokes, Len. I know. You know about this, don't you? You know, don't you? Yeah. Well? Oh, what's the point? The point is, whoever's done this, I'll go round there and smash his bloody head in, that's why. It was a woman, Len. A woman? 
Well, who, for God's sake? Oh, never mind. Well, what are you talking about? Never mind. Who was it? Well, you... You know, the other night when I, I went out with Bet, well, uh, I met this fella and uh, we had a few drinks and... Oh, what am I talking about? I had more than a few drinks. He finished up here. Well, it's happened to all of us, hasn't it? No, not like this. This one was a real beaut. Oh, come on, don't crucify yourself. It was just... I know what it was just, Len. We've all done silly things in our time. Oh. Especially with a bit of bevy inside us. This was rock bottom, even for me. And now, this. His wife. Oh, yeah. She sent me a message. A charming little note it was. You're not going to let her get away with it, are you? I mean, she must be a raving lunatic. Oh, leave it, Len. Will you just let it go? I'm at the end of my tether. I can't stand anymore. I don't want any more aggro, any more rouse, any more hurt. I... I just want to get this lot cleared up and I, I want a bit of peace and quiet, that's all. Just a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> did you go to Elsie's? Huh? And? Well, did you find out what's so? up? She's not been in work again today and Sedgwick's doing his not. It's driving me potty. <coughs> Why is it bothering you? Because Mavis goes in the cafe for a cream bun and happens to ask where Elsie is. She gets such a mouthful off Sedgwick, she's been nothing but a nervous wreck on legs ever since. I mean, oh, Peter, I mean, when he opened his mouth. Hey, has Elsie not turned in again, then? Uh, no, she's, uh, she's had a bit of trouble. Well, what now? Nor another fella. Look, um... Let's leave it there. I mean, it, it's her business, isn't it? Well, we are her mates. Somebody broke into her place last night. Smashed everything up, ripped everything to pieces. Look, he's all a bit sick. I, sh I shouldn't be telling you. Poor Elsie. Has she have the police? She won't. Well, she must. Listen, I'll go round and tell her to stop no. being so pig-headed. No, don't. No, I offered to help, but she said she didn't want anybody. She just wants to be by herself. Well, you're a fella. She'd probably be glad of a woman to talk to. Yeah, well, Bet can go round, can't he? Yeah, sure, love. Uh, I'll nip round as soon as we've shot here. Right. I could go now. You think I'm just going nosying, don't you? I didn't say that, did I? You don't have to. Look, Elsie's got a bit of trouble, real trouble. And she doesn't want you making a song and dance about it. Beth said she's going round there. Let's leave it at that, eh? <coughs> Len told me. I wish he hadn't. Well, he didn't broadcast it. I think he thought you might just want somebody to talk to. What about? Look, if you want me to go, I'll go. Oh, go or stay. Makes no difference, nothing does. That's not you talking. Me? Who's me? Elsie Tanner, that gutsy woman who didn't give a damn for nothing or nobody. I don't think she ever existed. I think she's just a figment of everybody's imagination, including mine. What about me, eh? Don't you think I look in the mirror plenty of days and know that there's no flipping connection between the face that the whole world sees and what's really me inside? But you've got to go on, cock. The show must go on. Oh, don't talk rubbish, Bet. Go on for what? Battling with life? Nobody's going to open those golden gates for us. Nobody's going to show us what's so fabulous on the other side. we better get used to the idea. I have. Have you had out to eat all day? About six aspirins and 40 cigarettes. So, now I've gone to the bother of coming round here when I could have been at home putting my aching feet up. Are you going to tell me what happened? Fielding. Bill Fielding? Oh, Elsie, I warned you he'd be trouble, didn't I? Yes, you warned me, and yes, I let him come round here. Have you always listened to good advice? So what happened? What's all this got to do with him? Well, it's his wife found out. She came round and she wrecked the place. All my personal stuff as well. She made a very thorough job of it. Are you sure it were her? Oh, yes, she left me a note. Oh, where is it? I burnt it. I don't get it. I mean, Bill Fielding's a right dead leg. Everybody knows that, so she must have. It weren't like he were a plaster saint that suddenly fell off a pedestal. Why should she suddenly go berserk like that? I think she must have thought that we were having it up for ages. Oh, we don't know what she has to put up with, do we? Frankly, I don't care. I just want to forget the pair of them. I want to forget the old rotten, sordid, lousy mess. But I haven't got much hope of that, have I? And just let her get away with it? She has got away with it. Oh, Elsie, this is stupid. 
Is it right you'll not fetch the police in? And tell them the old sordid story. Well, they're used to it. It won't mean out to them. Well, I'm not. They may be used to it. Oh, well, I, I didn't mean Bet, it. look. I'm finished. I'm... I'm sick with disgust at myself. So sick I feel like screaming. The only reason I don't scream is that I feel I'll never stop. Oh, I've hated myself before. But never as bad as this. I look in the mirror and I think, I don't know that face and I don't want to know it either. But I've got to live with it, haven't I? Do you honestly want me to sit down and tell the whole sordid story to some cold-eyed, hard, young copper? Do you know what it'd be like for me? It'd be like doing my own bloody post-mortem. Hey, don't suppose you could squeeze another cup, then? Bye, Herr Kilda. I don't know how you do it. You must be telepathic or something. <laughs> you can. No, I can't. Oh. Well, here, hang on. I want a word. For me? Yeah. Have you seen Nancy Tanner lately? What about her? There's somewhat up, isn't there? Is there? Well, when did you last see her? Yesterday, as it happens. Oh, you must be the only one what has. I've not seen hide nor hair of her for days. And that Wally fella seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. Yesterday, you said? Yeah. She had a bit of headache, migraine or something. Uh, yeah, well, I know she wasn't in work. Cos Stan went in there for his dinner and he said that girl were rushed off her feet, calling Elsa Tanner somewhat rotten. Migraine, you said? Something like that. Lasts a couple of days, then, does it? Cos she's not been in today, neither. I've heard her knocking about. Well, I reckon there's better ways of getting back on your feet than slaving your guts out over a tonne and a half of sausage and chips. Don't you, Hilda? Now, if you've nought to do, I have. Are you decent? You must be joking. You look a damn sight better than the last time I saw you. That's not saying much, is it? I thought I'd better come round and see how you're doing. Oh, I'm not done away with myself, if that's what you're thinking. No, I wasn't. I thought I'd cross my mind. You're joking? No, not. When I came back here and I saw all this mess, I wonder what I was on this earth for. I'd no idea. Oh, don't worry. I thought about it and realised whatever it is, I'm stuck with it. I haven't got the guts for our tales. Oh, yes, you have. Well, you're not the L.C. Tanner I've known and loved all these years. The worst part about it is the more I think about it, the more I realise I've only myself to blame. Still, it's nice of you to come round. It's nice to know that somebody still cares. Of course I do. I always did, you know that. Yeah, I know. How do you get on with the insurance? Oh, yeah. I phoned them up. Yeah, what'd they say? Well, they said if I didn't contact the police, it would jeopardise my claim, and we all know what that means, don't we? In that case, you've got no choice. You've got to go and talk to them. No way. No, no, come on. You can't afford to lose 200 quid's worth of gear. I'm not taking that chance, Len. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. Can you not see the headlines? Jealous wife takes revenge after a night of love. Oh, they'd love that in the Rovers, wouldn't it? They'll have a field day. No, it might not come to that. Well, I'm not taking that chance. So what are you going to do? Let her get away with it? Oh, Lose 200 quid's worth of gear? No, all I want to do, Len, is to get back to work and pick up the pieces. It's not going to be easy, but it's the only chance I've got. How did she seem to you? She'll survive. I wish I could be so sure. No, she will, you know. If there's one thing Elsie Tanner is, it's a survivor. Everybody has a breaking point, you know, Len. Even Elsie Tanner. She'll be all right, I'm telling you. How'd she go on with insurance? Well, she hasn't, does she? She hasn't. She hasn't put a claim in. She reckons there's no point. She doesn't think they're going to pay out unless she goes to the police. Did I hear someone mention the police? Yeah, that's right, Danny. Look. Oh, dear, something happened then. <laughs> yes, but it's nothing for you to worry about. Uh, it's Elsie, Mrs. Walker. She's had a bit of trouble at, at home, like. Elsie Stella has. I knew it. Now, what did I tell you? With vandals. I tried to tell her I'd heard something, you know, but would she listen? Um, vandals? <laughs> yes, they, uh, they got in while she was at work and chucked her stuff about. It's a clothes, mainly. They've ripped them to shreds. Isn't that right, Len? That's right, look. They haven't seen any police activity. No, you wouldn't. Uh, that's what we were just saying, that she's not bothering to tell them. But she must tell them it's a criminal offence. Yes, but she reckons that she asked for it, doesn't she? Asked for it? Well, you see, she went to work and left the back door open. Well, it's funny, I never noticed, didn't it? Well, you must be slipping then, Hilda. Right, then? Cheers, bud. I don't care how it happened. I feel she really must tell the police, for all our sakes. Uh, could I have a word in your ear? What is it, 
Look, forget the vandals. Forget them? I'll tell you everything that happened later, because I know it won't go no further. You mean there weren't any vandals, I mean? As far as Hilda Ogden's concerned, there was. Oh, very well. Look, dear, is there anything I can do to help? I don't think there's anything anybody can do, Mrs. Walker. Well, by heck, and me living next door and all. You just don't know the half of it, do you? You never said a true word, Hilda. Hello, love. I didn't expect to see you. Oh, well, I'm not stopping. I've got a message for you. Well, Elsie Tanner more like, but I thought it might be better coming from you. What's the message? It's from her boss, Sedgwick. Mavis went in to borrow some milk this morning, and he was furious. She's not turned in again. Well, I'll just get her to ring him, eh? She's definitely going in tomorrow. She's not, you know. He asked Mavis to give her this. What is it? It's a notice. He's finishing it. Oh, my God. That's all she needs, isn't it? Yeah. You don't have to keep your head down, you know. Oh, no. I bet they're having a field day in their always return. They've not had so much excitement since the Silver Jubilee. No, they don't know anything, not the truth anyway. Annie does, but it won't go any further than her. If anyone asks, you had trouble with vandals. Vandals? Yes, you left your door open on the way to work one morning, all right. Thanks, Len. Oh, don't thank me. It was Bet's idea. I can't tell you. It's funny the times that thought's haunted me on the way home. Anyway, how do you think it looks? Any different? If you say no, I'll throttle you. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Oh, well, as long as I'm back to work tomorrow, I may as well try and make the place look like home. That's what I'm here for, Elsie. Eh? You haven't got a job to go to. What? It's Sedgwick. He's sent you... your notice. He's finished you. He's finished me? Finished me without a flaming word? He couldn't, could he? Your phone's been off the hook. He really has finished me now, hasn't he? Well, I had a proper job to go. There was something I... Oh, this is the limit, Len. That's the flaming limit. Hello? Linda? Hello, love. It's me. Your mother. No, no trouble. I just thought... Uh... Well, I just thought I'd come over and see you. Well, I've got a couple of days' holiday coming up, and I thought... No, no trouble at all. Why? Well, I was... Uh... I was thinking I might come over tonight. Oh, good. Well, great. I'll be seeing you then, love. Love to everybody. Bye. Matilda. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Well, I can't stop now. Oh, we're uh, going away, are you? Aye, I'm off to see our Linda. See you. Hang on a sec. I just wanted a quick word. Well, I've got a train to catch. Yeah, I know. It's just that, uh, well, I heard about your bit of trouble, like. Oh, I. And what did you hear? Well, you know, about them vandals what got in and how they'd done for some of your clothes, like. And, well, I just wanted to say I was sorry. Thanks very much, Ella. And uh, I wondered if you could use these. Well, what are they? Well, it's not much. I mean, I haven't got much. It's just a, a blouse and a jumper. I thought they might come in handy. Look, Hilda, it's very good of you, but... It's the least I can do, isn't it? I mean, if I can't help you in your hour of need, who can? Child. Tell very much. I think nothing of it. Happen you'd do the same for me if the need arose. Yeah, happen I would. Well... See you. Yeah, I won't keep you. Uh, you're Linda, she said. Yeah. Uh, do you want anything getting in for when you come back? I don't think so, Hilda. To tell you the truth, I don't know when I will be back. See you. Ta yeah, ta-ra. Have a nice time. <laughs> 